Hello, my name is Sean and welcome to Daily Bread. Thank you for being here with us here at Church on the Move. And what we've been doing, we've been going through Ephesians chapter one. Um, it's awesome. And today I'm going to talk about Ephesians chapter one, verse 11. Um, a little bit about my background. As I told you, my name is Sean. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan with a single mom. I did not grow up going to church. So some of the things that, that we're gonna talk about today are really relevant to me. Um, I, I wish I would have known them then. Give, to give you so, some more background, uh, I was the kid who was always in trouble. I was the class clown. I remember there was a time when uh, my teacher, she called my mother and they said, look, he can't come back to school until he uh, until we meet with you. So we're, we're there, we're sitting down, and this is, I'm probably like third grade or second grade. So the teacher, she's uh, she's talking to my mother and I'm trying to look as sorrowful as possible because that's what you do in these situations. And uh, she says, look, I just don't want Sean to grow up and his his peers see him 30 years later and then they, they spot him out and they say, hey, look, remember Sean? Remember Sean Thomas? Yeah, look at the big fart. Oh my goodness. Now, remember, I'm second grade. I never, that's the funniest word to me in the world at that time. And I never heard a teacher say that word. And I'm, I look up, I'm like, and it felt like, okay, she just set me up. Like she knows that I'm going to laugh. How can I not laugh? So I'm, I'm biting my, my cheek the best that I could. And then she said, look at him right now. He's not even serious. And I bust out laughing. <laughs> my mother looked over like, are you serious? I had to take off work and you're, you're doing this. So she wasn't amused. So that was me before Jesus. My wife may say that's that's kind of me after Jesus, but here, let me let me read the scripture. I'm going to tell you why it means something to me and uh, when I was reading it, what I got out of it. Okay, so I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. This is, now this is Apostle Paul, and he's, he's writing this, he, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, I think we have a theme here, if you've been watching with us. Because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. So the, when I'm reading through scripture, one of the things I have to remember, so one of the techniques I use is read three words at a time. Read three words at a time and stop and think about it. So the first thing I thought, okay, furthermore, okay, he's continuing something. Because we are united, okay, because we are united. Because you're, we are united. What does united mean? So united is, it's one. It's, it's, it's like um, mixing spring water and distilled water into the same cup. You, you, you can't separate them after they get in there. That's what God did for us through Jesus Christ. Now, this is God choosing to be united with us. As I told you, I, I, I grew up uh, somewhat of a misfit. I did not deserve to even be friends with God, to know God, nonetheless to be united with him. But because of Jesus, you and I are united with him. That's very, very, very good news. Okay, united with Christ. And we have received an inheritance. And this is where I'm gonna land on a little bit here. So inheritance, it's looked at two different ways. The first way is, we have an inheritance. So I start thinking, okay, what's an inheritance? What's an inheritance? And I, I kind of came to, well, it's a gift that, that you receive that you don't deserve or you didn't earn, but you receive it based on relationship, based on relationship. So I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm reading the text, and I said, okay, what can I think of uh, regarding inheritance? Well, I've never personally received an inheritance, but the closest thing I could think of of a gift that, that wasn't earned, uh, but somebody received it because of relationships, was uh, one of my friends, one of my good friends I went to Bible school with. So his name is Jabbar. Hey, Jabbar, if you're watching. So uh, we were working at this call center, and we were doing technical support for one of the big cellular companies. And he won tickets because of, um, because of the amount of calls that he took and, and, and the quality. He won tickets to go see uh, a, a golf tournament, and it was when Tiger Woods came to Tulsa. 
He came to one of the golf courses here, and uh, Jabbar, he loves golf, and he won tickets to go see Tiger Woods play in this tournament. So he comes in. He told me he got tickets. He was excited. Uh, I'm terrible at all sports, so I was happy for him, but I was like, hey, good for you. So anyway, so he went to the deal. He came back the next day. I'm standing there. The supervisor standing there. They gave him the tickets, and, and Jabbar's there. And uh, the supervisor said, hey, how did you like the golf tournament? He said it was nice. You know, it was good. The, the, the greens were beautiful and, you know, everybody was out with the cameras and, and everything. And then he, uh, the, the supervisor asked him, he said, uh, did you get to meet Tiger Woods? Did you see him? He said, no, I, I, I didn't get to see him. He said, what? He said, this is a once in a lifetime thing. You didn't get to see Tiger? He said, no, I didn't see him. He said, you know what? To be honest with you, I left a little early. He said, why did you leave early? He said, well, I was hungry. I was thirsty. It was hot. He said, did you look at the ticket? He said, yeah. He said, you didn't look at the ticket. He said, what do you mean? He said, on the ticket, you had full access to the, the tent where all of the, the world-class golfers go, where they get drinks, where they rest, where they hang out, and where they eat food. You could have been sitting and eating food with Tiger Woods. My buddy never even knew. He was like, oh, no. Hey, that's what inheritance is like. That's what inheritance is like. Here, we, we have inheritance because of Jesus Christ, but if we don't realize it, it's just like that ticket. We can't take advantage of it. We can't benefit from it. Let me tell you something. I went through my earlier life as a misfit, but at eight, around age 19, I decided to give my life to Jesus. And ever since that point, there's been a progressive incline. Now, there's been some lows, but Jesus has been with me. I think that's that inheritance working. I believe all through school, I was a DF average student all through high school, accepted Jesus, and I was able to come through Bible school, great grades, able to uh, complete my bachelor's degree, great grades. Why? Because of that inheritance kicking in. I just chose to believe him and trust him more than I trust myself. So that's one side of inheritance. The second side of inheritance, so this is like two sides of, of the same coin, is uh, the, the interpretation of that we are now made an inheritance. Wait a minute. If you look it up, it says that we are an inheritance to God. So wait a minute. So we're a gift to God? Yes, absolutely. I'm thinking of, okay, how, how, can, I, how can I think of this? So, because I'm, I'm always, I close my mind and I'm trying to look for, for pictures. I'm trying to see something. I, I, I'm a visual learner. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And it popped in my head, my daughter. Uh, my wife and I, we were married uh, almost 19 years ago at the end of this month. And of course, we wanted children. My daughter, we, we, we lost our first child. And, and that hurt, you know, emotionally. Some of you all know what that's like. We, we get that pain. But six years later, God sent us a beautiful daughter. She's an inheritance. We waited for her. We prayed for her. We couldn't wait until she got here. In fact, I remember uh, I used to make a MP3 thing and take uh, headphones and put it on my wife's belly and, and it would play. It had worship music on there. It had me preaching to her, and she was the only one that, that would listen to me preach at the time, so that was good. And uh, I also told her, hey, you know, uh, you be careful in there. Don't, don't do anything to hurt yourself while you're in there. And we thank God for her. She's an inheritance. She's an inheritance. Now, fast forward years later, we always believed that we were to raise children, not just child, but children. And um, I was working at one of our, our campuses here at the church, kept running into people who were fostering, fostering and fostering. And God just started moving on my heart. So I talked to my wife. I said, hey, would you ever consider fostering, uh, which is temporarily parenting uh, kids for a period of time? And she said, she said, you know, I always said I would never do that. But lately, God's been talking to me about it. And we decided to go through the process. We thought we were, our, our goal was to, to get a little boy in the house and we'll have our daughter and a, a, a little toddler. Let me tell you something. God works. We got three, three more in the house that we're temporarily parenting through the foster system. Now, let me tell you this. They're a blessing. That's inheritance. We get to show them the things that I never received. 
I know what it is to feel like I'm not worthy. I know what it is to feel like I'm of low value. Some of you all may, may have that feeling too, those things that just kind of chase you from childhood. Let me tell you something. Not only do you have an inheritance so you can kind of sit up a little bit taller, but you are an inheritance. God loves you. He was waiting for you. He called you. He has destiny for you. He has purpose for you in the name of Jesus. So I want you to know, while you're walking, uh, our pastor, Pastor Whitney George, he gave us a, a mission this week to walk and listen and talk to God. While you're walking this week, on one of those days, this is what I want you to think about. Um, if, you're, if you're still uh, in that spiritual practice, I want you to think about, I am an inheritance and I have an inheritance. I am an inheritance and I have an inheritance. When, when, when you get down, when you make a mistake, okay, okay, I have an inheritance and I am an inheritance. When things aren't going right, when you feel depressed, when you put yourself in a bad situation, remember, okay, God's with me. I have an inheritance and I am an inheritance. Here, I want to pray with you right now. Let's, let's just pray and believe God to fully see that, that our eyes would open and we could see the beauty of how he looks at us and how we should see him. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We thank you for the op opportunity to come here as brothers and sisters in Christ and talk about your good word. And your word is good. Thank you for your scripture. We pray that you open our eyes to see that we have an inheritance from you. You gave it to us. And because you gave it, nobody can take it away. And we can't throw it away. We, we choose it right now. And Father, I thank you that you've made us and you consider us an inheritance to you. That's a good and loving Father. And we thank you for that. Open our eyes to see it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us. And let me tell you this. I'm, I'm sure you know it, but you are not alone. If, if you feel like you're, you're lonely right now, if you feel like you're just by yourself or isolated, you're not alone. We're with you. We love you as a church. Hop online, cotm.info. Find a home gathering. Find a small group. Get with somebody. Be, be an encouragement and receive an encouragement. Hey, there's other brothers and sisters that you have, and they have an inheritance, and they are an inheritance, just like you have an inheritance, and you are an inheritance. Link up with them. It, it, it builds us up. It strengthens us up. Iron sharpens iron, and we're family. So we thank you for, for being here with us at Daily Bread. I hope this, this word that Paul gave us encouraged you like it encouraged me. And God bless you.